Okay, let's start. Uh, so welcome everybody to this uh, session on what's new for JEPSTER in uh, 2016. Uh, so I'm Julien Dubois, I'm the JEPSTER creator and lead developer, and of course I am a Java hipster. <laughs> uh, just a quick show of hand, uh, who is using JEPSTER uh, here? Okay, just, yeah, okay, a few people, not, not everyone, okay. Um, so this is of course a talk, I'm just going back one slide on what's new. So it's mostly on the new stuff, but I'm going to do demos. So if you don't already use JEPSTER, you already have a good idea of what you can do with it. It's mostly on the new stuff, but if you don't know it, it's okay. You will still be able to follow what I'm doing. It's just going to be maybe a little bit fast, but that's, uh, that's okay. Um, I'm on Twitter, so my Twitter handle is at Julien Dubois, and for Java Hipster, it's at Java Hipster. And if you want to send feedback, and I love feedback, don't hesitate to, to tweet uh, um, well, whatever uh, you, you want to either to me or to Java Hipster. It's also me who is answering Java Hipster, of course. But I, I love to have feedback, so don't hesitate to, to send back uh, messages. Um, a couple of slides on what's new on J. Hipster. Um, I, I already have only have a, uh, a couple of slides, and then we're going to just code all the time. Um, so some stats on Java Hipster. Uh, so today we've got uh, more than 200 contributors. Uh, 13 people in those contributors are members of the core team. So that means they have access, right access to the repository. I'm not the only one. I'm, uh, uh, let's say, the lead developer, but I'm not the only one who has got right access, and that's on pupils. It's, uh, it's in the spirit of open source. Uh, we've got more than 4,000 GitHub stars, so it's quite a lot on, on GitHub. We're very, very popular on GitHub. One of the probably most successful Java uh, projects uh, uh, today. Uh, we've got 220,000 downloads, so that's quite a lot. It's going fast. And a uh, good stat, we've got one book. <laughs> it's done by Matt Rayable, who is, let's say, worldwide famous uh, blogger. Uh, and uh, so he wrote a book on the Epster, which you can, of course, download. Uh, I'm just going to quit already my slide, just to, to show a little bit the stats. Uh, so that's the pulse you know, on GitHub from, well, currently for, for last month. So as you can see, we, we, we are closing lots of issues. We're having lots of pull requests. We're having uh, so 36 people who, who, who worked on it last month. So we've got really a, a huge community of people contributing to the project. Um, Yes, for those who don't know, GHipster, it's a patch 2. It's all open source. We have no enterprise version. We don't try to sell you anything. There is no, you don't have to pay to, for, for using Oracle or anything. Everything is free. Um, and uh, well, we encourage all, always people to come and code with us. So if, you, if after this talk you want to code with us, don't hesitate to come. Uh, we're always happy to have new, new contributors. Um, also for the download stats, it's freely available here. So it's it's, it's an NPM package, so that's, those are the NPM installs of JHipster. So it's people who have typed NPM install JHipster. So those guys, uh, well, install JHipster on their computer. So it's not really like downloading a library, it's you really install it on your laptop. So probably those 200 and, uh, 220,000 installations means we have, a, let's say, a lot of users. Um, a little bit on the slide. Um, we're going to so do, um, well, all this presentation is going to be a huge demo. So um, this demo, uh, well, it's like uh, we've got a, a client. And uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to say. So I'm working for Epon, which is a company which is listed here. So that's why we, we have a one client. And it's asking us, oh, uh, we would like you to create for us an e-commerce website. This e-commerce website is going to be quite complex. Uh, so the main website is going to use MySQL and Elasticsearch, you know, to look for products categories and so on. Uh, and then there's a second team uh, they are going to do a, a cart, a shopping cart for, the, for your e-commerce website. And that shop, shopping cart should be uh, ID secured. So it's going to be uh, working with PostgreSQL and Hazelcast, and it's going to be distributed. So we, we want to do distributed cache so that when one instance fails, you have another instance that will you know, uh, uh, fail over. Uh, and then there's a third team, uh, and those, this team is doing a, a CMS, you know, for an e-commerce website. Very often you want some kind of CMS app where you have uh, articles and content about your products. And as it's a CMS, this team is going to work with MongoDB. So we've got three different teams, 
and they all want to work together and generate an app. Um, so for those who have not used Jipster yet, you will see the first app is, let's say, a normal Jipster app, and then we will grow, and we will see how we can add new teams and all work together, even if we use different technologies. Um, so the goal of this uh, presentation is that uh, after, I think I've got 15 minutes, at the end of the 15 minutes, we've got everything working and running in the cloud, and, oh, and with uh, metrics and failover and everything working. So hopefully, the Wi-Fi will work. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things I'm not going to show in the demo, so I'll just do a quick, quick show of things that we will not see in the demo. Uh, there are two interesting stuff, things, uh, well, new things, because it's on the new things on Jipster that have happened in the last month. The first one is we've got this cool thing. So it's a, a Vagrant virtual machine. Uh, we generate it. It's available on Atlas, you know, from Ashicorp. So you can just download it. And this virtual machine has got everything installed for you. So if, if you, you are in a big company, because I have many customers who are you know, on Windows in a big company, and they can't install everything, well, you just download this Vagrant image, and you've got, so of course, you've got Java working. That's quite obvious. You've got uh, Node.js uh, ready. Uh, you've got Docker ready. So everything is ready for you to work. Oh, and of course, Jipster is working, of course. <laughs> um, so if you don't, well, don't want to install everything on your laptop or cannot install everything on your laptop, you've got this nice uh, virtual machine with everything installed for you. It's, of course, all free, all free also. I'm going to quit it because it takes quite a lot of RAM. Um, but this is one of the good uh, news things that we, we have. Uh, and the second thing we are not going to, to I am not going to demo. Uh, quite recently, we have started a marketplace. Uh, so the Jeepster marketplace is um, a place where you can add modules to Jeepster. So we've got a whole API, and you can code your own Jeepster modules. Uh, why would you want to do that? It's because you have some different ideas on what should be generated, different from the main uh, Jeepster application. Or maybe you want to do something very specific for your company, something uh, that has a de different license. Maybe it's uh, something for pay. And if you, if you want to, you can publish it on our marketplace. It's all free. Uh, there is no control on it. Uh, well, there can be some control, but by default, there is no control. And while testing this, like one hour ago, I just saw we've got a new module, which just got out yesterday, uh, you know, for, for having Ionic on top of Jeepster. So it's something I had no idea about. So someone who did it, he published it. And uh, as you can see on our website, it's already there with the documentation. He had quite a big number of downloads. So I did not know about it, but a lot of people seem to have known about it. So if you also want to extend Jeepster, it's possible now, and this is something which is quite new. OK, now I'm really going to go back to my demo. So um, you remember we wanted to do an e-commerce application, and we've got uh, 40 minutes now to code it, so I need to start coding. Uh, first of all, so I, I'm in, I'm in a, let's say, repository. I've got already one uh, project generated. It's my backup if it fails, <laughs> because you know how conferences are. So first thing I'm going to do, everybody can, everybody can see clearly. Yeah, OK. Um, I'm going to call Jipster, like usual. Your G oh, sorry. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, directory to work on. I'll call it Gateway 2, so very uh, uh, original. I'm going to call Jipster, so I say your Jipster, and Jipster is going to ask me a few questions on what I want to, to generate. So what I want to generate, oh, and I can see the network is not very fast. <laughs> what I want to generate at the beginning, uh, you can either do now a monolithic application, that's the first new thing, or a microservice, uh, let's say architecture. Monolithic applications are what we used to do before. We still do it, of course. There's like 75 or 80 percent of people doing that, and that's what we recommend for normal projects. But if you want to, to be all hype and do microservices, which is what I'm going to do now, you can use now the new kind of applications. The first one I'm going to do is a gateway. So the gateway uh, is going to be the entrance to my architecture. I'm going to show you a diagram after that, but as here we are going to download quite a lot of st stuff. I'm going first to start the, the downloads and then show the, the, uh, 
the, the schema. Um, and so Gypsy is going to ask me some questions, like the name of my app, so uh, the port on which it will, it will, it will run, uh, my package name, so that's not really important. And now we're going to into the quite interesting stuff. Uh, what type of authentication do you want? Uh, so as we are with microservices, we can use either GWT or uh, an O2 server, which is in beta currently. So I'm going to use the uh, JSON web token. Uh, what type of database do you want to use? So that's, if you've already used Jipster, that's the usual questions you have with Jipster. What I'm creating is in fact, it's a normal Jipster application, but which, is, which has got some extension from microservices. Uh, so Jipster by default, uh, well, you can either choose an SQL database, a MongoDB database, or a Cassandra database. Uh, for this first app, if you remember, we're going to use MySQL. So this first app is with uh, SQL. Uh, there will be a third app with MongoDB that we will do afterwards. So let's say um, SQL. Uh, with SQL, we've got uh, several uh, uh, options. Either MySQL, MariaDB, which is a very, very new option. I haven't used it myself yet, by the way. Uh, PostgreSQL and Oracle. So Oracle, of course, for licenses issues, you need to add your own driver manually. That's the only thing we can generate. Um, well, I'm going to go quickly with the other questions. Uh, I don't want any cash for the moment. And I want to use Elasticsearch. I don't know if you remember you know, on my slide. Uh, so the client, he wanted to have an e-commerce website with MySQL and Elasticsearch. So I'm going to say, I want Elasticsearch to, to have a look at my products. Uh, I don't want all the rest. I'm going a little bit quick so we don't lose time. Oh, and some of the new things, we've got some new uh, testing frameworks available. The, the, well, we, we have Gatling for a very long time to do performance testing. Uh, we've got Cucumber if you want to do behavior-driven testing. And the new one is Protractor, uh, so you can do, uh, let's say, Selenium test on top of AngularJS. And so I'm going to select this one because it's quite cool. Now I'm going to say, okay, Jepster, generate my app. And hopefully the network will work. If the network doesn't work, that's, I'm going to do it myself. You know, I killed it. One of the new stuff, I'm going to start my IDE. Uh, well, let's, let's have a look at what happens you now if the w network doesn't, f doesn't work and if we have lots of issues. As you can see, I can already open my app. I didn't configure anything. I just you know, uh, generate and start it up uh, IntelliJ. IntelliJ immediately recognized it's a Maven project, so it's already here. Uh, there's a main app, so you can run it. I can already run it. That's why it's quite fast. Uh, of course, it failed. You remember, we, I killed it in the middle of downloading everything. What's happening now, and that's what, one of the nice new things we have with Jipster, we've got nice error messages. So now, whenever the application fail, oh, sorry. Yeah, we, we, we have two failures. We'll see the other one. Now you've got some nice error messages telling you, okay, this failed. Here is what you can do to, 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 to make everything work again. So you can just have a look and, and run everything again. I'm going to run everything again. Um, another new feature, I'm just using here. You see I've got some aliases. We're using oh my ZSH. I don't know if you use that on macOS or Linux. It's an extension to ZSH. And we've got aliases for that. So it, we can also go a lot quicker with that. So hopefully everything is going to be generated correctly now. Um, let's have a look at what we are generating and just opening up my slides again, if I can find them. What we are generating here is this architecture. So our customers are on top, you know, the browser. They're going to use one gateway, maybe several gateways. So the gateways are normal Jipster applications. Those gateways do, let's say, two things. Well, they act as a normal Jipster application, so you can, what I'm going to do now, you can add entities, work on it, no problem. But it also open, opens up the door in your architecture with something called Zool from Netflix. And uh, here, Jipster add on top of Zool a couple of filters for security, for rate limiting, you know, that kind of thing. So you can have some very good, um, uh, let's say, security on top of, of what is provided by default by Zool. And then uh, this gateway can access microservices that we are going to pop up you know, in our uh, infrastructure. So that's what we are going to, to see afterwards. Um, 
there are two other blue uh, boxes that I didn't talk about. Uh, one new thing with Jipster on the left is the Jipster registry. So now we've got a service registry, which is based on two uh, technologies. The first one is Eureka from Netflix, from Netflix which is a service re registry. And the second one is the Spring config server for configuring our microservices. And this config server can, uh, well, in the slide, uh, we're using Git to store our, um, uh, our configuration. So the Gypsy registry is like auto-configuring all, mi all microservices and doing like a, a dictionary of everything that is running so each service can find each other. Last blue box on the bottom is uh, ELK. So we're having the Elasticsearch log stash Kibana stack for monitoring everything. And as we generate everything correctly, well, what you will see is that we already have dashboards to monitor everything that is being generated. And to finish that, oh, so it's not finished yet. We'll give it a little time. Let's have a look at what is being generated. So here I've got my Jeepster application. I've got a few interesting folders. Let's have a look at them in order. So the first one is a new one. So that's in what's new in Jepster. Let's have a look at this new folder. It's SSCM and Docker. We've got a full Docker configuration for everything. So if you do a monolith, you already benefit from it. You can see I can run my SQL within Docker. So it's going to be much easier than uh, installing it and running it myself. Everything is already configured with your user and let's say a few tricks that, so that everything works. Uh, if I want to use the Jeepster registry I just talked about, oh, it's already configured here. And it's already available as a Docker image. So everything is already here for me. For my, this is, let's say, my infrastructure, and it's already configured for me. On the Java part, so uh, Jeepster generated a, let's say, classic Spring Boot application. Uh, can I have a look at here? So it's that's the usual spring configuration. Uh, the, well, the, the only, well, the most important thing to, to, to notice is that we've got two profiles, two spring profiles, one for development and one for production. So here, as I'm developing, I'm using the development one, and when we will go to production, we'll, we'll, we'll use the production one, and we'll see the difference, because of course, everything is ready for production. And so this is my Spring Boot application, and it generated here an AngularJS application, uh, so that's also very new in, uh, in Gypsy 3.0. We moved to the John Papa style guide. So John Papa has a very uh, popular style guide, which is validated by the AngularJS team. So that, uh, let's say, that guarantees us that we should have a nice uh, upgrade pass to uh, AngularJS 2 when it will be ready. And work on Angular 2 is going to, to start very soon. Um, let's have a look. Ah, OK, it's not starting very quickly. That's the issue with uh, the network here, um, I'm going to kill it and use my backup. It's exactly the same, but it's already working. <laughs> it's already downloaded. Uh, so CD gateway. And here, of course, I'm going to stop that. So it should be exactly the same app. And so usually text, I don't know, uh, a couple of minutes to download if you've got some nice network. But here, yeah, obviously, it's not very, very fast. So uh, here is my gateway, which was previously generated. And uh, as it's a, um, a gateway with uh, microservices behind it, I'm going to need to a Jeepster registry. So this is another Jeepster project so that we, uh, well, we, we provide as open source. It's also Apache 2. So you can just clone it, download it, We've got Docker images. There are many ways to, to, to have access to it. Here, I just cloned it. And you see I'm on the develop branch, so I'm not afraid. Uh, what I need to do first is run my registry. And what I'm going to do here now is my gateway. When I run my gateway, what it's going to do is it's going to connect to the registry, grab its configuration, and also tell the registry that it's running. And I will have let's say my first application running, and my infrastructure will be ready to run. Let's have a look. Um, oh yeah, what, I, what we are going to do is my Spring Boot app is running, it's starting, it's already here. What I'm going to do is open up a terminal, and so the good thing with Jeepster is you've got all the human workflows, uh, I mean, everything with Gulp uh, for, for building your JavaScript, uh, min minifying it, and handling your browser. So, if you run Gulp by default, 
It's going to run browser sync. I don't know if you use browser sync. It auto reloads your browser. So when you have this, I can have like uh, another browser. Let's open it. Oh. And browser sync is going to synchronize uh, what I do on both browsers. If I, you know, if I scroll, the both both scroll. If I go to I don't know to to the to this web page, you see I go to the to that web page on both apps. So it's very handy. And if I type something, I'm typing it on both browsers. So it's very handy if you want to 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 test your application with different browsers, different devices, it's uh, and with different uh, resolutions. So um, so I'll keep that running, and my app is already up and running. So that's perfect. So that was the first part of the show. It's like, whoa, it's generated, it's working, perfect. But now, what we want to do, if you remember, oh, I, I killed it. Uh, I want to do an e-commerce website, and for that e-commerce website, I want to add entities. I don't want to have a, like an empty website. And I'm going to, to want to generate entities here, and those entities will be for only products, brands, uh, categories of products, and so on. So I'm going to cheat, in fact. Uh, previously in Gipster, you had to answer questions and answers. You can still do it, and I will do it for my other microservices. But if you have something bigger to do, which is more complex, we've got something great which is available here. Uh, we've got the GDL Studio. So for Gipster, we've got our own domain language for coding entities. Uh, this domain language can be used with uh, UML editors, so you can use uh, your usual U UML editor to, to generate your entities. But you can also go online, and if you, I'm just going to do a small uh, demo. You see, if I, if I add something here, you see it already, uh, it's working uh, immediately. So it's just working out of, you know, it's graphical, it's very easy to use. Uh, there's a little demo language to, to, to learn, but it's, it's got autocompletion, highlighting. It's not very uh, uh, difficult to learn. And so when you got it, uh, you go to that web page, it's also all free. Uh, and it's working even if the network is, is out because it stores it in local storage. So for demos, it's good. Once you've got, when you are happy with your, with your entities, so you see I've got a product. The product has got a brand. It's got some subcategories, some categories. It's got an enumeration uh, for the size of my products. So it's, like, it's good for my e-commerce. Once I've got everything OK, I can just download it. And I already downloaded it. I've got it twice. And uh, I've got my uh, database uh, schema, which is ready. Let's have a look uh, at how it works. Um, I'm going to go into my gateway. Uh, I'm going to move. Uh, so I download it here. I'm going to take this one. And now I just call Jips, Jips to UML. And I tell it, oh, OK, here is my file I uh, um, downloaded, execute it, and generate the website for me, the application for me. I'm going to do it here, but I just want to show you everything running. Um, here it is. Here it is. Perfect. So I just run this. And this, as you can see, it's generating, at the same time, the Java code and the JavaScript code for my app. You can see it's refreshing behind the scenes. It's, it's browser sync, which is saying, oh, we have some new JavaScript. Let's refresh the browser. Everything is getting ready. And it's already finished. If I come here, oh, categories are here. Subcategories are here. Brands are here. Everything is ready. So I generated my whole app, you know, like, you know, just with a few clicks. So that's already good. Uh, of course, that's just the front end. And you're going to say, oh, OK, wait. Your front end is, is cool, but the back end is not working. You know, if I create a product, well, you can already see a few errors. I can't. This is just not working because my back end is not updated yet. Uh, and you can see with browser sync, this is all, also updating. Uh, and let's have a look at the app. As, as it's a Spring app, I'm going to just compile my app. And what Spring Boot is going to, to do, you know, we, we're using Spring Boot Dev Tools. So we've got a specific class order for that. It's going to refresh everything. And as we use Liquibase to update our database, it's also going to update our database. So it just, in just a few seconds, 
So it's a little bit slow because I'm using Elasticsearch, so it's, it's also we started Elasticsearch, which is the, the slowest part. And now if I come to my app, add a new category, say test. Oh, it's working. Oh, and I clicked a little bit too quickly. So as you can see, in like a few seconds, I automatically reloaded my app and the database, and everything is, is running. So I can create categories, subcategories. So this one is like, I don't know, pizza. Uh, it's not alcohol. Uh, it's got, it's in this category. I can create products. It was my product. Let's say test, test. Oh, sorry. I, got, I went too quick. There's an image here. So I automatically clicked on the image. Uh, let's take an image. So my product is here, everything is working. And this is Elasticsearch, so I can search. I'm gonna, I, uh, if I look for test, it's working, of course. If I do something else, it's not working. So I have both Elasticsearch and my database working. Everything is ready. And my e-commerce we website is already, let's say, kind of ready to go, because I've got categories, subcategories, uh, Elasticsearch, everything is ready. So that's good. Uh, but then, if you remember, we had three teams, and the issue, when you have lots of teams, lots of people, a very big website, is that you're going to want to split your teams, and that's the part where you want to start to do microservices. Uh, I'm working for large companies who have like, I don't know, 50 or 100 developers, and of course they can't all work uh, on one monolithic code base. It can work, but it's kind of difficult. Uh, and the other thing is that, you know, for one part of the app, you want Elasticsearch, like A, and for another part of, of the app, you want MongoDB, which is my other example. And if you put everything in the same app, it's just going to be awful in terms of number of technologies and things that you are going to configure. So the good thing, of course, is to, 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 to separate those apps. Here I've got my gateway. Now let's code a microservice and see how this fits together. So I'm going to, to, to open another terminal. And uh, so my first microservice is the shopping cart. So let's, get to, let's go to the shopping cart. I'm calling Jipster again, your Jipster. And this time I'm going to say, okay, this time I want a microservice. Yeah, so first thing it does is it's checking if the internet is working. <laughs> um, my microservice is going to be called cart, shopping cart. It's going to run on another port, 8081. Uh, package name, we don't really care. It's going to use the same authentication mechanism, of course, GWT. Uh, we said the cart is going to work with PostgreSQL, uh, and it will have a distributed cache. So we're going to have a look at that. Uh, with Jipster, we use Ibernate, and Ibernate, you can have a second level cache. If you want some performance, that's what you need to use. Uh, so you, can, you have three choices, either no cache, which is not what I would recommend, a local cache with EH cache, which is a very good local cache, but it's not distributed. And as we want to scale, this is going to be an issue because we will have synchronization issues between our instances. Or Hazelcast. Hazelcast is good because it's a distributed cache, but usually it's a bit complex to set up. And we will see that here we've got nothing to do. Uh, and I think that's all we want. No, we don't want inter internationalization. Okay, this generate in my app, I can open it in ID, so my app is here, I can already run it, so let's run it. Um, so what this app is going to do first is going to register itself in our registry. Oh, I forgot to show you the registry. So the registry is this app, so it's all open source and it's available as a Docker uh, image if you want to. So uh, the registry here, uh, we've got the default dashboard, can have a look at the running apps. Oh, the cat is already running. The gateway is here. We've got one instance of each of them. You can have a look at the history uh, of uh, the registrations. So everybody has, has registered correctly. Oh, the gateway has uh, had an issue and then registered again. I didn't see. Ah, yes, that's normal. That's when I did my uh, compile. No, it, it reloaded. So it unregistered and then registered again. So that's normal. Uh, the, regi the registry can also be replicated. It's not on my laptop. And you've got like uh, lots of information on configuration and how you can configure everything. I'm not going to, to go to, through all the screens for, uh, because we don't have the time. So my cat is running. If I come to my gateway, here, yeah, you can see that 
we've got an admin screen telling me, okay, there's, a, there's this route which is open, which means that the gateway has opened a route to the microservice. So it's already up and running and available. Uh, one nice thing with JAPster is that we work with Swagger. So Swagger auto-generates documentation for all your apps. So this is the documentation for the gateway. You can see the brand, the product. If I have a look at the product, you can uh, get all products, for example. Uh, try it out. So this is good, very good if you want to test, uh, if you are an AngularJS developer of, or if you want to, well, to, to test with a, with a console. As you can see, we generate everything, including the authorization header for GWT token. So that works well for my gateway, but it also shows as a cart, and it's already exporting the configuration for the cart. At the moment, we didn't do anything, so it's empty except for your profile. So let's generate some stuff in the cart. So the cart, uh, I'm using oh my ZHH again, so I've got some shorter names. I'm going to generate a new entity called um, item. I've got, I want to have items in my cart. So the item has got a product ID of type uh, long. Uh, yes, it's uh, required. And it's got a price of type uh, big decimal, which is required and which has a minimum of two. And uh, it has got a, a, a user, user login of type string, which is required. OK, auto-generating everything. And I'm going to use uh, uh, Spring Boot uh, DevTools again. Uh, this is my cart. I'm just cleaning up. If I just compile, of course, usually I do auto-compile, so it just works out of the box. OK, it started up again. It's ready. Let's have a look here. If I come back to my cart, so the documentation al al already shows me there's an item now. So I can have a look at the items. The API is here. OK, let's, let's, uh, let's create an item. So I can use here the documentation. So I'm creating, I want an auto ID. So the price is 10. The product ID is uh, something. And the user login is, uh, is myself. And I can try it out. Oh, it's working. Perfect. So I use the documentation. You're going to tell me, you, but I thought you were going to auto-generate everything. Yes, I'm going to auto-generate everything. I want just to, to show how it was working behind the scenes. What I want also is to have my cart available here in my entities. And to have this working, in fact, it's quite easy. You see, I, I say uh, Java Ipster generate an item that's on the cart. I'm going to go to the gateway, tell it the same thing. It's a gateway. It's going to, to say, oh, I'm a gateway. Do you want to generate this from a microservice? Well, yes. <laughs> it's asking me where the microservice is. So it's, oh, sorry, it's here. Yeah, microservice. Oh, sorry. Did a mistake. The directory is this one. So here is my directory. Generate it. And we're done. It goes async, auto refreshed. It's here. Oh, and my item is already here. You know, I generated with the swagger. So everything is working from the front end to the back end. Everything is auto refreshed between my microservices. Everything is just working out of the box. That's very easy to do microservices that way. Uh, I wanted to do a second microservice, and I've got only 15 minutes left, so hopefully it will work. Uh, so the second microservice was using MongoDB. Oh, so that's something I'm going to have to do. I have to start MongoDB. Oh, is it MongoD? Ah, oh, MongoD, OK. Uh, so you're a jipster. So I want to generate a microservice with MongoDB. Come on, microservice application. Oh, sorry, and I did. One big mistake. I gave it the same port number as the other microservice. So that was going to fail. So CMS8082. We're starting to see an issue, in fact, here. Uh, my issue, uh, no, and no. It's generated. My issue is that, as you say, so see, I need to enter port numbers, run everything. I wanted to have MongoDB. I needed to start MongoDB. 
Uh, for MySQL, Elasticsearch, and, MySQL, uh, and PostgreSQL, I cheated because I run them in memory. But all this is a bit annoying to work on. So at the moment, it's working, but we're going to see it's not going to be enough. So let's start the CMS app. It's going to register itself. So if I come back to my registry, it's going to appear here. Yes, here it is. So my microservice is here, perfect. And I'll go quicker for this one. Uh, I want to generate uh, articles in my CMS. So an article has got a title of type string, and it's got uh, some content of type string also. And I don't want anything else. So you know the saying, I just compile, and it works out of the box. So the backend is already ready. And on the front end, what I'm going to do is execute some command. So this just generated the backend, and on the front end, just saying, OK, generate the front end. It's generating the front end. It's going to ask me where my microservice is. Here it is. Yes, here it is. Generate everything. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa, my CMS. It's here. Oh, it's not, it, it, I went too fast. It's already registered here. No, it should be here. Come on. Yes, it's here. And as it's coming from MongoDB, and I already created that in MongoDB, I've already got a message. So I know everything is working. So here I've got my full stack working. So the gateway, two microservices, three databases, Elasticsearch, everything is quite easy to work on. Uh, still, as you can see, if we are a big team, uh, I've got a couple of issues. So the first one, I've got to run everything. And mostly, I'm probably just working, let's say I'm working on the gateway team. I don't want to, to, to know how the CMS or the cart is working. I don't want to set up MongoDB. I don't want to do all the things. I'm just on one team. I don't want to know what the other teams are doing. So the trick is, here is that we're going to use Docker to containerize everything and uh, well, have something much more easy to work on. So I'm going to, ki to kill everything. Yeah. Even that. Because this is just all annoying. And we're going to do something much more easy to run in production. So what I'm going to do, well, first I'm going to run Docker, because if you don't have Docker, it's not going to work. Then I'm going to my app. I'm going to create a new directory called Docker, CD Docker. And I'm going to use a new subgenerator called your Jeepster Docker Compose. Oh, sorry. Docker Compose. The subgenerator, what it's going to do, it's going to ask me where are all my apps. Well, it's by default, it's on the parent uh, folder. It already saw all my apps, so my cart, my CMS, and my two gateways, yes, is my backup one and the new one. Uh, so I'm only selecting the ones I want, it's, and it remembers my selections, by the way. Uh, it sees that one of my apps is using MongoDB, so it, it, uh, it offers me to have uh, MongoDB in a, in, a, in a clustered environment. I'm not going to do that now, of course. Uh, and as I'm doing a microservices, it tells me, well, probably you want to monitor everything with ELK, so I'm going to say yes, monitor everything. Uh, everything is going to be secured, so that's also something very new. By default, the password is admin. It's good for me. It generated, let's say, world Docker Compose file, and it saw that I didn't do a couple of things. What I didn't do is build Docker images for all my apps. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to Spring IO, uh, Gateway, and it gave me, as you can see, it gave me the, what I have to run. So I'm just copy pasting. Uh, build the gateway, build the cart. Ju I'm just copying, copy pasting what it gave me. Spring IO and the CMS. And it's going to build Docker images for my three apps. Um, let's have a little look at what it's doing here on the gateway because that's the gateway is a more complex app. What it's going to do is it's going to run all the tests, front end tests, back end tests, and it's going to package everything for production. The most important thing is what it's doing now is going to use a gulp to minify all the JavaScript, CMS, HTML file 
So we have got uh, something very performant in production. Oh, maybe I should have stayed with IntelliJ to show that. Uh, by default, we, well, by default, in development, we always use the John Papa style guide, which um, pushes us to have lots of little files for everything, because we are very modular. And that's very good for development. But in production, you don't want to have 100 JavaScript files, 100 HTML files, and everything. So what it's doing now is going to minify everything into a couple of very big files, uh, and it's going to serve them uh, with um, uh, caching, with jzipping, with everything. So it's highly performant in production. Uh, let's just have a quick look. So those, this was my original AngularJS app. So as you can see, with lots of little files. And what generated is this new AngularJS app, which looks the same, but which is highly compressed. Uh, if I just have a look at the index file, in development, well, you, you have all the JavaScript HTML, which is listed. In production, you just have this. So you can imagine that in production, it's going to be much more efficient. Um, and, oh, and something new with jpster 3.0, we generate source maps. So this is something that Chrome, uh, Chrome DevTools will understand. Because the issue with this very compressed JavaScript file is that it's impossible to debug. So we generate source maps, which are, in fact, debugging information. And Chrome is able to fetch those and then allow you to debug your app. So it's highly minified and very performant in production, but yet you can still debug it as it was in development. So it's very good for production, and still for development, it's the same thing as before. That's very, very good. Uh, let's have a look. Does everything run? Whoa, doesn't look good. Oh, sorry, it didn't start. That's normal. <laughs> sorry. Oh, and I had one big failure, so that's not good at all. Uh-huh. I don't know why I, what I did. OK. Uh-huh. Oh, I played with my thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't have to run it again. I know it will fail. I will use my backup. Trust me, it's the same, it's the same thing. <laughs> oh, no, hang on. Uh, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to run Docker Compose again. And I know that which one is the CMS that didn't work. I'm going to remove it, and that's all. It's easier. Now I'm going to run my app with Docker and without the CMS. I have to have a look at it. You see, I did some, uh, some tests, and the test failed. I don't know what I did. Oh, address already in use. OK. I'll try it again, but otherwise it's not very important. What Docker, Docker did here is it started all my images, well, the gateway, one microservice, we'll see if we can start the second one. It started also the ELK stack for monitoring everything. And well, normally, everything is going to run in Docker. Uh, so for development, that's pretty easy because I can have everything on my laptop. And for production, of course, you can grab those images and deploy them in production if you have Docker in production. Uh, I didn't say it, but uh, we, we are now sponsored by Eroku and Cloud Foundry. So we have uh, generators for Eroku and Cloud Foundry that are all, all, also working very well. So basically today you can use Eroku, Cloud Foundry, Docker. Uh, Amazon Web Services is also working, but we are not sponsored, so I'm not really, I can't really say if it's working well. Uh, but we've got, let's say, the major clouds working. Uh, let's have a look at my app. So the registry started already. Uh, the cart started, so the cart started first because it's smaller than the gateway. Uh, the gateway should be out pretty soon. Oh, it's already here. Okay, so everything started. I can already come here. So now I'm in production. I don't know if you remember, I had here a development banner. I don't have it anymore. I'm in production. Everything is minified now. If I do some, uh, um, some Chrome uh, audit, I can see that Everything is minified and, and running very fast. As you see, everything is highly minified. There's no issue at all. Everything is zipped. Everything is cached. Uh, and I have access to my uh, cart. Yeah. 
If I want to create a new product in my cart, oh, I got a little timeout. I'm confident it will work. Yeah, it works. So here I've got my gateway and one microservice. Can trust me for CMS. I won't have the time to run it again, but can trust me it's working the same. And everything is now monitored because I selected to have ELK to monitor everything. And ELK is gathering statistics for everything. As we know what you want to, 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 to monitor, uh, each application is sending the right data to ELK in the right format. And uh, we've got already lots of dashboards available for you. Uh, I'm using, I'm always using this one, but you can use, of course, other ones. Uh, this dashboard, so, so I've got a registry, a gateway, a cart, it's monitoring. Uh, so those are my, Java, my Spring Beans. So it's monitoring access to the Spring Beans. So uh, we are very, um, uh, we have some very uh, uh, internal uh, uh, monitoring of what you are doing. We, ca we know that this Spring method is slow or is being called too many times. And of course, what I'm going to want to do is to scale up my app. And I've got only three minutes left, so it's going to be really quick. I'm going to run Docker again, Docker, um, yeah, Docker Compose. Um, I'm going to say I want to scale my app, so I want to scale, come on, see it. What's happening? Oh. Whoa. Come on, Docker. Compose, scale. Okay, I want to scale my app. It's not the right name. I'm trying it. Oh yeah, it's the right name, okay, sorry. Auto-completion worked. I thought the auto-completion was not working, but it's working. So what Docker did, it started the second instance of my cart. And what's going to happen, so we're going to see it arriving here. I'm going to put it in auto-refresh so we see it arriving automatically. So a second cart will, will appear here. It will also register here. So here we'll have a second cart arriving. And what's going to happen is that those carts are going to see each other through uh, Eureka. And what Zipster does, it it will auto reconfigure as a cast, so we've got a distributed cache between both instances. So I'm going to have two instances with a distributed cache, and it's going to be all monitored. So what I mean here is that my cat is going to be highly secured. If I kill one instance, and if I have the time, I will do some kill dash, dash nine on it, while the other instance will, uh, well, will still live, and so you will still have your data working. Um, yeah, it's already here. So you, you see now I've got one gateway and two cards. And if I come here, my gateway sees those two cards. So it's going to be load balanced. We've got failover. We've got a circuit breaker. So if one of them fail, you go automatically to the other one. And we've got a distributed cache. Let's just have a quick look. Oh, you see the other card here. It's monitored. And if I use here this little query, you can see in my logs, we've got a, a, a cluster with two members the first instance and the second instance. So I know I've got my cluster working. Let's, one minute. <laughs> Let's try it in one minute. I'm not sure I can do it in one minute. <laughs> so I'm going to create, oh, it was already created. So as you can see, I've got one item here, it's working. And to kill it very quickly, I'm going to use an IDE. Yeah, graphical environment, it's quicker. I'm going to kill the first cat because probably it's the one we were on at the beginning. It's killed. Over, it's done. And if I go very quickly here, oh, I wanted to show you, ah, okay. We are lucky. The first request is, is failing. Now we've got a circuit breaker, it's open. It's not going to fail anymore. It was not failing before because we're on the other instance. No, we, well, I had one chance that it failed and I got it, and now it's not failing anymore. Hopefully, come on. <laughs> no, now it should not fail anymore. You see, I'm refreshing like crazy. It's not failing anymore. It just went to the other instance, and now it's over. And if I start it up again, I just do scale again. It's, oh, you wanted two, there was only one running. I'm running a second one. And now my new instance is going to come and uh, join the cluster and it's going to work all over again uh, with load balancing, circuit breaker, and everything. Okay, I think it's time to finish. 
I have one more minute, so that's perfect, <laughs> because I talk a lot. Uh, if you want more information on Jipster, we've got a website with lots, lots of things. Uh, whoa, the Wi-Fi is really not working very well. Uh, if you have some feedback, don't hesitate to send me uh, Twitter uh, messages, uh, either to myself or to Java Hipster. I'm always happy to answer. Uh, and if you want to use Java Hipster and have some issues, don't hesitate. We've got uh, Stack Overflow. We've got uh, GitHub issues. Stack Overflow is, is, is here. See, there are people having issues. We are always there to help. Stack Overflow, uh, GitHub issues. And if you want to code and join the community, you are mostly welcome, of course. Uh, as you can see, we've got more than 200 people who joined, 223. So it's quite easy to join. Uh, it's surprisingly easy. Uh, uh, Jipster is coded in, uh, in JavaScript. It's Node.js, in fact. So that looks awful. Uh, and I always thought it would not work. But in the end, it's working very well, and it's quite easy to join. So I, I welcome everybody who wants to join. Some people just did some very, very simple stuff, like uh, changing one comma. But still, that's good, because uh, that was one comma which was not correct. And we want to generate something which is very, very good. So, oh, and that's over. So thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you.